Welcome to the Create Today podcast. This show is all about how you can create the life that you want, no matter what shit you've been through. I'm your host, Karen Stanley, and with me is the amazing, gorgeous, talented, um, beautiful Meg Harper. She's a lot of things. She's an incredible artist, painter, who brings wonderful life to, on a, on lots of different materials. A lot of her materials that she paints on are actually recycled. And um, we'll tell you all about that. But welcome, Meg. Thank you so much for being here. Oh my gosh. I'm just <laughs> thrilled beyond belief to Me too. be here with you. Me too. If you can't tell, we've been friends for a really long time. <laughs> um, Meg and I, I, we go back since 1997. And really? Yes. That's when I moved here. You were born then? Yes, I was was four. Um, And I met her at the agency that I started in marketing with. And it's a big agency still around today. Great people. Taught me everything I know. And she was a mentor of mine. And her story is so great because she left the corporate America world and started her own business with her passion. And she's the like the best example I can think of, of someone who's created literally a life that she loves, full of joy and travel and everything that's important to her. So we want to hear all about it. So you can tell people how to do the same if they are in a job or career that they don't love, or that it's not really their passion. How do they do what you did? Mm. Well, you're doing Right. Um, so tell us what your life is like right now, and then we'll go back to the beginning. Okay. Oh. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> I was, yeah, I'm so excited. Um, so as Karen said, um, I, I have my own job uh, as a artist now, a painter. I wow. am doing about 100 paintings a year. This is 14 years in now, full time. Every year it keeps getting better. Uh, I have my own schedule. Uh, we travel about four months out of the year. Mm. My husband and I work together. My sister works with me. There's a couple others who help me. And um, I create joy, mm. really, with a paintbrush uh, through my work. And I'm just thrilled beyond belief to be a light in the world and to uh, be able to give my gift. Yeah, you truly are, and you do. I own many Meg Harper originals, um, and they are some of my most prized possessions. My my flamingo is, we think I need to look at the back of it, but I think it's the fifth or sixth original that you painted oh, wow. ever. Wow. Um, and now I'm on fifteen hundred and forty seven. Wow, <laughs> that's so incredible, and they're so beautiful the way that she um, brings animals you you paint beautiful people too your specialty and your love is animals yes because I feel like animals are healers Mm -hmm. nature is a healer color is a healer so I and I use reclaimed stuff which makes people feel good so there's like four levels of goodness when you look at my painting it's true and everybody says that when they come to my house and they see them (laughs) they're just stunning and they make everybody so happy so now 20, let's see. Gosh, when did you start working at Larry John Wright? 1980 something, right? Wasn't it the 80s? Mm. Oh, man. 91. Was it? Okay, right. I think so. Okay, so 1990. You're a graphic artist, right? Yes. How did you even hear about this or get that job? Um, That is a good question. I knew some, somebody in the art department. You did? I knew from somebody else, from somebody else kind of thing. And I I went in and interviewed in the art department. And I really knew very little about, I taught myself how to use a Mac and all the programs and everything. Because I was classically trained in college. So I had no idea how to do Apple and all that kind of stuff. So anyway. You weren't a graphic design art major? You were an art major? Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's hilarious. So yeah, I just taught myself how to, because they were new to everybody. I mean, I- That's true. I started when Apple was just- That's true. Yeah. So anyway, um, yeah. And so we had like, I think the agency had maybe five clients at that time. What yeah. were they? Peter Piper's or- Or Pistol Pete's Pistol Pizza. Pistol Pete's Pizza. Brown and Brown Chevrolet. Of course, Henry Brown. Yeah. And you were doing their- print ads for right. the newspaper right 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 right. I was doing print stuff yeah 
And I think I worked for maybe like eight months. And it was like, my goal was to get somewhere that I loved and be able to stay in my 20s. I felt like I was always the last man hired and the first one fired. And so I just was like, gosh, I want to belong. I want my tribe. I want to be somewhere. Yeah, it's a good tribe to be. I was in that tribe for 12 years. Yeah. It's a great family. It is a family and it's amazing people. Yeah. Um, then what happened? Um, we lost like two clients or something. And I was like, oh shit, here's it. here it goes again. I'm going to get fired. So I went into the bosses and I said, hey, listen, <laughs> I see the writing on the wall here. And I just want you to know that I don't have to just be a graphic artist. I could be whatever you need me to be because I really like it here and I want to keep my job. And, and they and said, they uh, why don't you sell? Why don't you just get us some clients? Because that's what we need right now to stay in business. And like the next day, I was not an artist anymore. I was in sales. <laughs> wow. Okay. The hell did that look like? Um, cold, cold, how did, what would you do? Well, I don't even know. I really don't. <laughs> I think I had a phone book or something. I mean, it wasn't a lot. Yeah. It was. Did you get some clients? I did. Oh, of course. Yes. Right at the beginning? Yeah. Didn't take you very long? Oh, no. I didn't think it would. No. No, I think I had like, um, a feed store and maybe like, I don't know. They were very small clients. <laughs> they were very <laughs> small clients. <laughs> but I think Honda Cars of Mesa was actually one of my. No way. One of my first. Oh, no. It was uh, East Valley Jeep Eagle. Mark. Mark no Kawasaki. No yeah. way. Yeah. Mark K. Yep. Holy crap. Yep. So he was one of my first ones, I think. Oh, that's amazing. And then we kept him forever. And then even after I left the agency and had my own agency, I worked with Mark K yeah. there too. It's just been yeah. amazing. So cool. Yeah. So um, I think another thing that I just want to share with listeners is that one of the other things Meg is, is that man, she will not quit. <laughs> she will not. If you give her an assignment, she's on it. It's done. Like before you ask, how do, where do you think that comes from? What is that drive? Like you don't wait, you don't procrastinate. You no, just I don't. fucking do it. I know. I love that about me too. I do too. Um, I think that I got to see how much taking action on things progressed mm -hmm. me. And mm. uh, it actually was easier on my brain to just do something and get it done. And also... Um, it allows more to come in. Right. So if you just have all this stuff waiting for you, you're not allowing the universe to give you more because you're saying I'm full, even though you don't know you're saying that. Mm. So one, two, both mental. One, to just clear it so that I can move on, and two, to let other things in. Wow. Well, you learned that at such a young age. I think that's a miracle. Yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah. And I'm from New York and I, I don't know. I mean, I, I've been told that we're just really, as a lot, we're really good workers. Mm -hmm. I don't, I know that when I first came here, when I said I was from New York, that was a positive for employers because they somehow mm. thought that was going to be yeah. better. You think you're just born in the rat race or something? Yeah. <laughs> just bred that way. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know either. You weren't even in New York City. No, I know. It's upstate New York. I know. 30,000 people in my hometown. So let's just get perspective here. <laughs> it's really funny. Yeah. But yeah, but that is, I mean, it's true of you. I don't know every New Yorker in no, the world. No, no, you can't. Yeah. You can't like, do so, that. It's kind of I'm funny. I'm saying that's what true, though. people it, said to me in generally, the interviews. It's generally, yes, uh, a feeling or a, a people. A belief. Belief that people have, yeah. Yeah. I can see that. Yeah. Well, when I met you in 97, you're like this badass bitch, you know, with your briefcase and your suits, and you had a <laughs> Honda Prelude, man. That was a bitchin' car back then. <laughs> And it's so funny because people that know you now or only have known you as an artist would never even, they would never dream of you like that. No, and I know. Would, cannot even fathom seeing you pull in in a sports car and a briefcase and a suit and fucking crush it. You yeah, know, you're know. just like, you just, so you did that for, gosh, let's see. 13. 13 years. Yeah. 
Now, uh, before the 13 years, mm, that's what, what happened a couple years before you retired? Um, I got really burnt out. I, yeah. I mean, it, the story is not new to the ad in, ad agency right belief system. You know that it's just long hours and deadlines and people wanting more and more and more and more and more, and you just get really stressed out. And I was making more money than I ever thought I was going to in my lifetime, yeah. and I was just so tired. Yeah. And so unfulfilled. I, I, it was not enough anymore. It was not enough anymore. The money was not enough to sustain me. And I wasn't worth it. Yeah. And I did a course called Landmark Education and, uh, my husband and I, and I really, that allowed me to get clear on what I really wanted to do in my life and Mm. why I was at the ad agency for so long and it had to do with my dad like pleasing my dad thinking that he wanted me to be business successful and I would get more love if I mm. if I was a big powerhouse business person hmm. so it was good to like let that go and have the conversation with him and he's like I don't care what you are I'm gonna love you no matter what so, wow that was so, yeah. a belief that you had that wasn't even true wasn't even true <sighs> Well, then what did you do? Then, uh, so I, we devised like a five-year plan. So in this five-year plan, before I quit, it was to pay off as many things as we could. So we paid off the house, paid off the cars, um, paid off the credit cards, just got financially ready wow. for not really knowing how it was all going to go. Yeah. And... uh and this was when Tori, my husband, that's my husband, mm-hmm. when Tori had a construction company. Mm-hmm. So I quit at three years. We mm-hmm. did it in three instead of five. Woo! Woohoo! And um, <clears throat> I wanted to take a break before I dove in, and he had a construction company at the time. So I had like five years off. Um, And I really took that time because I was just so exhausted. I feel like I just napped and and journaled and lunched and napped and journaled and lunched for a couple years. It sounds amazing. (laughs) Yeah. I want to do that. Yeah. I told my husband I'm going to take a year off someday and just read. I just want to read every single book that's on my bookshelf that I haven't read yet. Yeah, exactly. Um, I just want to tell people that may not know us that I had a baby I went on maternity leave April 8th of 2003 and I came back eight weeks later because I I had to like seriously use my sales skills on our boss to just let me have eight weeks instead of six and then I used like an extra two week or something of my vacation and I convinced him to let me work from home for the first three months. So, which is unheard of. I know now it's like an everyday thing, but. but back then, no, nobody did that. And, um, and they said, yes. So it's my first day back. I've got my nanny. I've got my, my office set up at home, my computer, whatever, everyone, I'm going back to the office to go get my files from my accounts from everybody else. You know, so I had, everybody else was had a couple of my clients that they were taking care of. And while I was gone, so I was going to get the files, get an update, tell me everything I need to know so I can jump back in. And I was going to go back home. I did. So when I get home, I get a call from the owner of the agency and he says, uh, did you, can you, have you, did you come in? He was kind of stuttering a little bit. I was like, well, I I just left, but do you need me to come back? Um, well, yeah. Uh, do you want to double your income? (laughs) I was like, okay. Cause he didn't want to, he didn't want to tell me anything, but he needed to see me. I was like, okay. So I literally drive right back to the office and that's when he said Meg is retiring. And Meg waited until I got back from maternity leave uh, to, to the day. retire <laughs> that day <laughs> so that in hopes that I would get her job. Yes, I told them because they immediately freaked out and they were like, well, who do you think should take your job? And I was like, uh, duh, Karen, <laughs> of course. That was amazing. Yeah. Yeah, so that happened and you just hung out with me for a couple of weeks while we t- told all of the, you know, 
Tell everybody the news, all the clients the news, and yep. then and you ran off to the sunset. Yep. Friday the 13th was my last day of whatever month it must was. Must have been June. Yeah. Well, Brandon was born April 8th. Yeah, it must have been June. Yeah. That doesn't sound like, maybe I did only take six weeks off. I don't know. I can't doesn't remember. Matter. doesn't matter. So, yeah, so I became the director of the agency, and you're taking a five-year nap. <laughs> yeah, I'm taking a five-year nap. <laughs> and then and then 2008 happens. Yeah. And we had a construction company and someone else was managing it for us and um, oh the books were not being kept. And one day um, the shit hit the fan and we found out we were like $1.2 million in debt. And um, so bankruptcy and lawsuits oh and about God. a year and a half of just pain. Mm. Yeah. Um, so that was really hard. And after that, uh, 2009 ish, I was like, all right, well, either we're going to do this art thing or we're going to have to get jobs. Right. Yeah. So on the heels of bankruptcy, um, I knew that I needed to figure this out and figure it out fast. So... (laughs) I started like with manila folders and all the ideas I could think of, of ways to make money. And I, I had, um, literally like 52 sticky notes Mm. of like mantras to just keep me focused because it was dark times. We, we really had no money. We were barely surviving and, um, Mm. I just kept going that thing Karen was talking about with me I just don't give up and so persistence I I didn't know what was going to work I didn't know the formula I feel like this industry when you ask an artist how do you do this how does this work what do you you know I want the formula I want to know what this is step number one this is and they all were like just keep going no one really had any good advice so except that is good advice. Keep going. Keep painting. Yeah, keep it's the painting. the only way you're going to sell <laughs> anything. Yeah. So... Just paint. So I I happened upon art shows. I think I did a very small one. Like my first one was an Audubon show. Um, hmm. It's something called Cattle Tracks, which was a bunch of studios. And I think I sold like two originals and maybe like 20 prints or something. And I made like three grand, let's say. And back then that was just a hundred million. It was a hundred million dollars. Oh, and I was like, I think I can do this. I really do. And so I just, I was my own, um, kick-ass, uh, boss. And so Mm -hmm. I just made myself keep going. And then I found, a. um, I wanted I knew I wanted to do something that was unique. So I started like, how can I make my paintings unique? And I started putting beads on them. No one, I I never saw anybody do that before. And so I started doing that. And then a gallery picked me up and in downtown Scottsdale and stuff just kept kind of opening up slowly because Mm. back then we didn't even have internet really it was just Mm. starting like there wasn't social media the way it is now Mm -mm. so I mean you could have a website back then but getting people to it and actually selling off of it was not an easy deal like it is now um so it was yeah just I think all of the the work that at Larry John Wright so I learned at Larry John Wright um how to create a system Mm -hmm. of communication for people, how to communicate with clients, how to meet with them and get information and go back and paint and deliver it back to them and be able to have it be something that they loved. Um, Just the marketing elements too. All the marketing that we learned was amazing. So I knew- Literally use it every day. Yeah, I knew how to advertise for myself, so to speak. So right. um, I can remember being at a show. I was in a three-month show um, at a tent, uh, an art 
event in 2009. And I can remember a jeweler coming up to me and saying, you need to chill out. You are just trying too hard. And I was like, Weird. I know. I was like, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I must be doing something right. Wow. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that didn't deter you at all. No, hell no. Most people would be like, oh, sorry, I'm a little much, too much. You know, yeah. that's what I would think. Yeah. My nah. younger self. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yep. So the year 14, um, it just really, it really is about commitment. Like you, can't, it's so scary to make that first leaf, but I had a fire under my ass. I had to make money right away. Mm -hmm. And I think that that actually was motivating mm -hmm. versus a person who doesn't have to make money necessarily. Mm -hmm. You know, it's easier for them to give up. It's easier for them to be like, and eh, I guess this isn't for me. Right. But just don't listen to what anybody says and just work a plan. Gosh, I had, you know, I had a to-do list every day. I would make up stuff to do. I would go, I, at one point I was going to veterinarian clinics and like pushing my pet portraits. I, um, did a lot of weird things just mainly to keep me moving forward. And so that I would feel like there's momentum. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, uh, which does, that's really smart. I mean, that actually is the key is doing something, taking action to create the momentum. It's, you can only do it after you have momentum. So what are you going to do to create momentum? Right. Um, that's brilliant. Some kind of action that could take you closer to a sale of some sort or an idea that could maybe t put you in, you know, in contact with somebody who may know somebody or want a painting or whatever. Yeah. Um, I had no idea. Yeah. So you just it. wing it. Just wing it. And I kept just going out there. I held uh, parties at friends' houses and they would invite friends and I would show my art at those. That was something mm -hmm. I did in the very beginning. That was mediocre. But, mm -hmm. you know, there's no like one aha moment or one like big thing that happened where it all of a sudden was successful it really was like just inching inching mm. inching inching and every year it got a little better and a little better and a little better mm. and I didn't I didn't even my bank would even call me they uh when I first started and they'd be like Meg you need to transfer money <laughs> you're gonna bounce this check oh. tomorrow if you they were so sweet it was a smaller bank and they wow. cared about me oh so nice yeah so I mean there was gosh I feel like it's back before you could just look at your account online and I would just call. Yeah. And look, be get like, your balance <laughs> on the recording. Yeah. I would call and get my ba balance like literally every day. Mm. Yeah. Cause it was, whew, it was tight. Right. Tight, tight, tight. But you were able to keep your house. Yes. And your truck or both of your cars because you had paid them off. Yeah. They were um, not worth very yeah. much. Or I think the truck was upside down and the Prius wasn't that much money. They okay. didn't need to take it. So that's good. Yeah. And you basically lost everything else. Yeah. And the house <laughs> was upside down. Oh so they couldn't gosh. take that either. So, yeah. That's a blessing. Yeah. Because you, you had paid it off, but you took out a, mor a mortgage loan or whatever it's called. Home equity loan. Home equity for the business. For the business. For Tori's yeah. construction business. Yeah. Yeah. You... Guys built a house that it's in my neighborhood back in 08, 7, 08. Yeah. Still don't know which house it is. No, I can't yeah. figure it out. I'll have to see if I have the address on anything. Yeah. I'd love to know which house it is. <laughs> yeah. There's literally only 11 that are that are custom, full custom homes oh, okay. in this whole neighborhood. Oh. And then the whole thing, you know, went to hell in a handbasket in 2009. Nobody built anything until Toll Brothers bought the rest of it four uh. years ago. Or maybe five, whatever, just recently. And then built the rest of the neighborhood. Yeah. They sold the whole thing to Toll. Actually, we found out that the developer, who you obviously dealt with, um, or Tori did, uh -huh. um, we met him at a Christmas service at a, at a church that our friends go to. Wow. Um, and uh, I said, I just want to say thank you for this. We're so blessed, and we love our neighborhood, and we love our home, and you know, thank you for developing. He's the one that developed the whole thing, put in that statue at the, at the entry and everything. And, uh, 
I was like, it's so beautiful. Thank you. I love living there. Like, we love living here. He was like, do you have a home church? <laughs> he just wanted to recruit me to go to his church. <laughs> it was so funny. I thought that was hilarious. I was like, oh, well, no, but just want to say thank you. Thanks. Yeah. But he ended up, um, his partner passed away and four or five years ago and his partner's family wanted their half of the money. They wanted their half of the business. They wanted to oh. buy it, be bought out right away. So he had to. So he had to sell this whole thing and whoever know whoever whatever else he had to sell. Wow. And that's why he sold it to Toll Brothers. And that's why the rest of it is not full custom homes. We were able to customize them as they were being built. But right. Yep. Yeah. So now Tori builds art. <laughs> as Karen said, I use reclaimed materials. Mm-hmm. So he'll take a street sign and um, he will, you know, we have like a seven step process we do to everything and he'll build the backing and he'll prime it and sand it and all the stuff you have to do to it. So now he builds art instead of homes mm-hmm. and um, it's fun. It's We're a great combination because I don't use canvas. Um, everything has to be constructed. So he mm-hmm. literally has like projects every mm-hmm. day to so build. Basically, he's building your canvases. Yes. Out of all recycled materials. Yeah. yeah. Like what? Uh, so street signs, as I said, mm-hmm. cabinet doors are perfect because mm. they're, Karen has one of those. Have they a have of those. a frame all the way around them. Um, game boards, uh, luggage. Um, I use appliance, sides, parts, tops. Cool. I didn't know that. Yeah a washer and dryer kind of appliance stuff. So cool. Um, we've used uh, airplane metal. We've used uh, um, tabletops. Oh, cool. Somebody this summer in Colorado had like a round tabletop that had been in their family for like 40 years or something, had been painted 32 times wow. you know, kind of thing. And they gave it to me. And they wanted me to do a commission on it. So we brought it all the way home and they love it. It's now, mm. they live what in did you paint on it? Superstitions. Um, it's the superstitions in a desert scene. And then they have three dogs in the front. Oh, so sweet and happy and fun. Oh, I love it. Yeah. So that's fun too. Now people are giving me things. I have a gallery in uh, Prescott that carries my work mm-hmm. and there's a cabinet door guy that just will randomly drop off cabinets there for me. <laughs> so cool. Yeah. So that's fun now too. People are just like, here, Meg does this. I know she can use it and they drop it off. We get gifts. How did you originally come up with that idea? Like what's the very first, how did that oh, even happen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... I love the earth. I'm yeah. an environmentalist. Yeah. And I, we have a solar hot water heater. I drive a Prius. I compost, recycle. Mm-hmm. Um, tomorrow. Garden. Yeah. Tomorrow I'm taking a tour of the Phoenix recycling plant with Melissa. Oh, cool. Yeah. Cause I want to learn what we're doing and what we're not doing just so I can educate myself. Mm-hmm. And, Cause people kind of want to know about that cause they know what I do. So, um, Yeah, so about the time I decided that um, sewing beads on paintings was Mm -hmm. too meticulous and I was going to shoot myself, (laughs) I did did 10 of them and that was it. Um, See, I have one. Yeah, uh, what else can I do? And uh, I went to Tori's family and they were doing historical remodels at the time and they had taken off a corrugated tin roof off of um, a courthouse in Florence. Hmm. And um, the courthouse didn't want any of the metal. So it was literally stacked like seven feet high, probably. And it was like the week that I went and asked them if they hmm. had anything for me to paint on. And wow. He, he's like, come with me. <laughs> and he came out to the pile and he's like, here you go. You can have all that. Wow. Whole truckload worth of corrugated tin. Yeah. Weird. Yeah. So, so cool. that's how it all started. I just started playing on that and I loved it. And um, that was when I was doing that three month show and I mm. brought it in. So I had half my booth canvas and half the reclaimed material and people just loved it. Mm. And uh, it was getting more attention than my other stuff. And I was like, 
and it mm. felt good to talk about it too. Mm-hmm. And uh, it just, everything felt right about it for me. And I, you know, that was like, I don't know, mm. 1,450 paintings ago. Yeah. Yeah. A so, long time ago. So, yeah. And there's still nobody doing what I do that I know of any, I maybe there is in another state. I just don't, I haven't seen them yet. Yeah. So, so unique. Yeah, so it's and fun. Have something that was repurposed. Yeah. And a lot of it can go outside, which is just such a fun bonus that you don't get in this industry. Oh, right. Because they're metal. Mm. Ooh, so people can put me. them out at the pool, out uh, on their patio, at their front entry. I have a lot of people who put um, my donkeys at their front entry just to, like, you know, get people to laugh before they even come in. Cute. I'm kind of getting known for my asses, Karen. <laughs> well, you funny. Always been known for your ass, actually. <laughs> Isn't that funny? It's so perfect. I know. And now she paints asses, and they're so cute and so fun. Yep. They're hilarious. Yep. Donkeys make people happy. Yeah. I don't oh know what it gosh. is. Uh, who's ever going to listen to this right now? I'm just going to say go. <laughs> Spend time with a donkey. If you are depressed, <laughs> if you are sad, go spend time with a donkey. And <laughs> you will no longer feel that way. They are so engaging and hilarious and fun, and they can't get close enough to you. And they're like a big dog. No way. Way. I don't think I've ever been around a donkey. Okay, well, do it as soon as you can. Okay, I'm on <laughs> it. She's going to ask me if I did it a week from now. <laughs> She's going to text me every three days. Have you seen a donkey yet? Have you been with a donkey yet? No, not <laughs> She one. Means no, it. you got to be able to go yeah. up to yeah. it and interact with it. Yeah. I'll get in trouble if I don't see a donkey immediately. Yeah. Especially the miniature ones because they're so small. They're so cute. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I would have one if I could, but alas, mm. no donkeys allowed in my backyard. Damn. <laughs> uh, Pretty sure they're not allowed here either. No. Uh, that's okay. Um, so I was just thinking... I, if somebody was to go back into how you became crystal clear about the life that you wanted to create. Mm, Okay. And somebody's not really sure how to do that. I'm not really happy what I'm doing, but I would like to do something else. How do I figure that out? Right. What would you say? So I would say at your present job right now, are there, uh, is there any activities that you enjoy? Mm. Like, just dissect it. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, well, I don't like this part, but I really do enjoy this part of it. Mm -hmm. Like, write write it all down, right? And just start noticing what things you enjoy doing. Bingo. Yeah. Specifically. Specifically. Yeah. Yeah. And then just investigate, like, what other kinds of jobs have whatever those three things are, those four things are, and get really clear on what your priorities are. Because, you know, you might not find a job that has all those things, but if the top four, you know, are there, Mm. then perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, um, though I was going to say, maybe is it important to write down what it is about it that you like, or does that not necessarily matter? Oh, I think it, as clear Just as you can activity. get anything. Okay. What I would like about it, I like creating. Like for you, it would be like, give us an example of some things from okay. your list. So from Larry John Wright, I loved being with people. Mm-hmm. I loved helping people. Mm-hmm. I loved going in and doing the investigative work and asking questions and um, being engaged. I loved... I loved helping people. I'm gonna say you like s- providing the solution. God, I loved that. Yeah, because we helped their businesses grow and we got them customers, and yeah, we had to come up with new creative ways yeah, to do things. Yeah, and I loved the creative process too. Me too. Yeah, just coming up with the ideas. Mm-hmm. I can remember back then, you know, you, I would go through magazines to just like come up with ideas, and I just love using my brain anyway. So. To me, that was just a fun, fun way to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Using your brain in new ways. What new thing can we do? Yes. You're also really good at improving systems too. Did you put that on your list or did you enjoy doing that? Like you're really good at- I did. You did. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, I did. So it was something, we would have all kinds of, you know, chaos at an advertising agency, obviously. Yeah, there was like 40 people. Yeah. 
And um, oh, and we owned our own production studios, which a lot of ad agencies do not. Yeah. So we had our own TV, radio, print studios mm-hmm. that we had. We to, were directing. Yes. And we were producing yes. commercials yeah, every yeah, yeah. single day. Yes. Yeah. So there was a lot of bits and pieces once we got back there. To yeah. Figure out. Yes. Um, which we still work, obviously we still work with them. My, uh, you know this, but other people might not know my husband's, you know, dealership is still working with them. And so it's so fun. I still go back to the same production studio that, you know, and (laughs) and we're still doing shooting commercials there. And it's so funny. And the other day I was back in the radio production because back in the day when I worked there, I would, I would read 10 scripts every day like radio scripts for other clients, you know, right. Meg did Voice too. Over work, yeah. And so it was just like the last time I was there, I was like, Hey JR, you got any scripts for me to read? <laughs> it feels so weird to walk out of here without recording, record, recording something. Cause I'm not on camera. I'm just, I'm just the support team for yeah. my client. Yep. But yeah, it's really, really, um, really fun. We both worked there for a long time. Yes. So for a while, you know, there's only like four people at my company. So mm-hmm. for a while I had like a production form. <laughs> <laughs> and my sister's like, really? <laughs> I think this might be a little overkill. So now it's on sticky notes. But <laughs> when I was first starting, I really, like, I did love inventing all the systems of how to make sure it all got done. And Funny. I still, I feel, I feel like I still do have a pretty, I have systems of, um, just keeping track of the art and numbering mm-hmm. everything and photographing it and um, keeping track of all my clients mm-hmm. and reaching out to them and a newsletter. and um, But also if somebody's dream is to have their own business or to start an art studio or to be an artist or anything, you just, hi- you just get help of all the things that you're not oh, good at. Oh, yes, absolutely. Right? Yes. You hired out bookkeeping. That's not your forte. Yeah. Not your favorite thing to do. I mean, you can do it, but yeah. Yeah, I did. You don't love it. Yeah. Many years. Yeah. Yeah. And you can just get help. Yes. So the main thing that I figured out Mm -hmm. is that you figure out everything you need to figure out. Like there's not some thing that you're going to come across. You're like, oh shit, I'm never going to figure this out. You do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's super powerful for people to know. Yes. Every day you're going to learn something that you don't know and you just go figure it out. Yes. And it's not really a big deal. No. Especially not now. It, everything you ever wanted to know is already on YouTube. Right. <laughs> yes. It's Literally. Easy. Yeah, everything. I didn't even think about that part. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So people who are also, I meet a lot of people who still have a job and then they're an artist and they're afraid to let go, you know, oh, I'm yeah. afraid to go full time. I bet. Please go full time. Just go do it. Yes. You'll jump in and everything will get better. Because you'll just have more time to do it. Mm -hmm. Nothing will take you out of it. When you have one foot in and one foot out, you can't. And whenever, I I, I mean, there's tons of artists that come in my booth Mm -hmm. like, how do you do this? I want to do this. It's their dream. Yes. And I'm like, if I can do it on the heels of bankruptcy with nothing, then you can. You can. It's just paint something. Yeah. Get a body of work. Yep. And, you know, I don't need to go into all the details, but it's, it's. Nothing's rocket science anymore. It's really just committing to it and not getting distracted and losing focus. Right. I mean, I feel like people get so sucked into so many other things in life. There's so many distractions, Mm -hmm. just staying focused and Mm -hmm. making sure that every day you're on it and revising your plan if it's not working and just you're on it every day. Yeah. Producing and producing and producing. Because what I've seen in the last, you know, 14 years you just are always painting. You're always painting. Yeah. Always, I, always, always, always. Just do another painting. Do another painting. Do it. You just, there's no other, there's, I think that like, that people don't get that. If they yeah. want to do it, you just keep going. You're not going to be a millionaire in two weeks. Right. But you need the work. You need the work. You'd have, you just have to keep going. Yes. Just stay consistent for long enough and just yes. don't give up. Yep. So important, and yeah. you're such a great example about it. I just wanted to get in your head and say, how do we help people do that if that's what they want to do and they want to start their own business or they want to be a photographer or an artist or any kind of yeah anything? Even if you just research, like even yeah. if a day you just spend researching, mm. you know, it doesn't matter. Just keep, keep, I, I put, uh, I have a wall in my house that um, 
that I have um, notes with a Sharpie that I tape up there and they're my to do's. Um, you know, I have like a dream one and then I have like a one that's just, you know, this project, I need to do X, Y, Z and this project, I need to do X, Y, Z and just being clear on what you have to do and just revisiting it, Mm -hmm. whatever system you use, revisiting it every day and adding to it and revising it and getting help and Mm -hmm. taking action. It's going to all work out. It really is. You just have to start. Just start. That's the best thing you can do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Don't let fear stop you. Fear is just so yeah, not where you need to go. And you can ask yourself too, like, am I making this decision based on fear? And if you are, like, ask yourself, do I really want to make that decision based on fear? And mm-hmm. nine times out of 10, no. Don't want to. So what do you say instead? If I, if I realize I'm making a decision based on fear or I make a decision not to do something, which is the decision, how do you, how, how do you get out of that? Yeah. Well, what do I really want? Mm. Ask yourself that. Well, what do I really want? I want to stay here and freeze and do the same thing that I've been doing (laughs) or do I want to create something new? Yeah. Yeah. So that desire has to be front of your, has to be stronger. Yeah. Right. Yes. Your commitment and your dedication and your whatever you want to call it, moxie, has to mm. be stronger than your fear. I like moxie. Mm-hmm. It'd be a great sound bit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> moxie has to be stronger than your fear. Yeah. You know anybody else who uses the word moxie in a sentence? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to start now. <laughs> so good. <laughs> Yeah, baby. I love it. Oh, yeah. So I had, I am just remembering, I had st- I probably had five, at least five yellow sticky notes in my car. And I can remember people getting in my car and being like, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> it, would, it would just be to keep me on. I'd had them in my car. I had them um, on my uh, mirror in my bathroom. I had them next to my bed. I had them on my refrigerator just to you know, I know how you say like songs matter. Well, words matter, thoughts Absolutely. matter. Absolutely. All of it matters. We'll listen to podcasts that keep you going in that direction. Don't listen to friends who are going to naysay you. There's always going to be naysayers. There's always, always going to be people who say you can't do this. And You're you just crazy. Got, yeah. You had a great job. Yep. Yep. And don't listen to them, please. So what are the, some of the things that are written on your post-it notes? Oh God, I don't remember. remember. It's been so long. You don't even need them anymore because no. you're, it's, yeah, it's kind of became a habit. Yeah. To just tell yourself those things. More than anything, just to believe in myself. Mm. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. So they were basically, are they affirmations? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Positive affirmations. Yeah, that's another thing. Like, use all these awesome self help gurus mm-hmm. who are there mm-hmm. for you, mm-hmm. free. So much free information. Yeah. There's so much support out there now that there wasn't back then. Right. We had to rely on like real people or buy a VHS tape that we watched. Right. (laughs) A stack of CD sets. Right. Tony Robbins. We had those in our garage for a while. Exactly. So awesome. Yep. So now I'm in two galleries and I'm in probably eight different shops around the country and I sell off my website and I do about 30 art shows a year I sell about 100 paintings a year and um, incredible it's it's yeah I'm living my dream it's so incredible so inspiring to me and I don't even know how to paint I don't want to be a painter (laughs) but it doesn't matter whatever it is whatever passion that every one of us has you can create a business with it Absolutely. And you're a testament to that. And Amen. Amen. I hope I inspired you people out there. Oh. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do now, it. Do, do it. it now, do it now. Do it now. <laughs> oh, man. Thank you so much. This has been amazing. This has been so much fun. Yes, Meg. it has. Oh, my God. Uh, I love tell it. everybody how they can find you. Oh, um, so MegHarper.com is my website. That's the easiest one. And then yeah. there's a contact Mega for that. Yeah. Um, And that Um, has everything that has where to find me, what festivals I'm in, how to get a hold of me, how to do a commission, Mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Pet portraits are so.
so fun. If you love your fur babies, you just upload a picture to our website and then she will paint them. And it's so amazing. Mm-hmm. It's the best. Fun, fun, fun. I have several of them. I've given them away as gifts too. A yes. couple of them are just incredible. I love them. Karen, and people love them. Yeah. Karen's been very supportive of my career. <laughs> I'm so grateful I've had her to... <laughs> Remind me that I can do this when I, you know, <laughs> I have sucky days too. And yeah. It's friends like you that kept mm. me going. Well, I wouldn't buy them if they sucked. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be honest. All right. All right. <laughs> You're really good at it and they're beautiful and they make me happy. So there's that. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Thank you, Meg. And everyone listening, thank you so much for listening and thank you for being here. God bless you. And just remember that you can create the life that you want Just take it one day at a time. That's all it is. Yep. God bless. Love you.